Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's an honor to be with all of you today, and thank you, Congressman, for that very kind introduction. You are a wonderful friend, and you're doing such a great job, maybe because you stole half my staff and kept them <laughs> when I left the Hill. No, but you're a, you're a wonderful representative for South Dakota. Thank you for caring so passionately for all of our people. You know, Chairman Thompson, I also have the honor of having one of my former chairmen on this committee sit in front of me today. Chairman Lucas was my chairman as I served here in the House of Representatives and had the chance to do two farm bills but serving under his leadership on this committee was a special honor for me, and I loved uh, being a member of his team as we put together farm policy, which I always refer to as food policy for the United States of America. So it's wonderful to see you again, Chairman Lucas, and I look forward to continuing to receive your advice and wisdom over the years. Uh, Ranking Member Scott and members of the committee, thank you so much for letting me be here with you today to discuss this topic. As a former member of this committee, I know it very well that each day that you protect not only our nation's food supply, but you also are stewards of our land. And it is a treasure for us to be able to do that each and every day. I come before you today and sit as the 33rd governor of South Dakota. My home state is known for its gorgeous black hills, its rolling plains, but also iconic Mount Rushmore. We have a lot to be proud of, and if you haven't come to visit us, you probably should, because it is beautiful. Agriculture is our number one industry in our state, but tourism is our second largest industry. It's incredibly important to our people that our land stay in good shape and we continue to produce. This year is special to me because this is the 30th year that I have worked on agriculture policy. I have spent my lifetime working on policy, not just being a farmer and a rancher and raising my family on the land, but also being involved in meetings. Um, at the, just the age of 22, my dad was killed in an accident on our family farm, and I got angry when I found out how our family was going to be hit tragically by the death tax. I started showing up at meetings to talk about policy and how it impacted small farms. At that time, the U.S. Senate Majority Leader was Tom Daschle, who was a Democrat. And I ended up him appointing me to serve on the Farm Service Agency State Committee, which is the committee that oversees all the federal farm programs in the state of South Dakota. I did that for many years as a young uh, wife and mother, and also as a farmer and rancher running a large operation in our state. So I was heavily involved in the implementation of federal farm programs in our state, making sure they worked for all of our ranchers there, and that they were as flexible as possible to give them the freedom to choose how they ran their farms and to do it very well. I also served on many different commissions and task forces out here in Washington, D.C. during those years to help disadvantaged farmers, people that were in tough situations and different critical situations. And as the general manager of our business operations, I ran our farm for many decades. I was first elected to our state legislature in 2006 and became the assistant majority leader in the House. While there, I rewrote our agriculture property tax system. I ended up running for Congress, was elected, served on this committee, uh, and we worked on two farm bills while I served on this committee, also served on natural resources, on the Armed Services Committee, Education and Workforce Committee, and then ended on Ways and Means Committee when we did tax reform and was very proud to see that signed into law. In 2018, when I ran for governor in our state, and I won and then was reelected again last year or in 2022, and I'm in my second term now, I tell you all of this because I think it's important for you to know that my heart is with the land and it is with our people, but at, when it comes to policy that I know what I'm talking about. And I know it because I live it. Today I focus of this committee is the danger that China poses to American agriculture. Over the years I have witnessed this hostile communist country work to systematically take over our food supply chain. They have decades ago started buying our fertilizer companies, controlling our ability to access fertilizer, bring it into the United States. Then I watched them buy up our chemical companies as I worked on implementation of programs and policies at our state level and at the federal level. I watched us as we sold citizenship to Chinese communist members of the, of the Communist Party uh, for investment into our processing systems. And now most of our processing facilities are owned by the Communist Party or Chinese government. Uh, now they are coming for our land, and when they buy up our land, they will com complete their chain of control of our food supply. Between 2010 and 2020, the Chinese Communist Party's holdings of ag land increased by 5,300%. Reports now show that China owns about 3, 384,000 acres of U.S. ag land, valued at over $2 billion. This should be alarming to all of us. USDA admits that not, this may not even account 
for all of the land that they own because of there's very little track of foreign interests that are involved in these large transactions. In fact, there's very little reporting that happens at the state or the federal level and little consequences for allowing countries who hate us from owning our land. Just this past summer, we had members of the Communist Party contact our state government and want to come and visit to our processing facilities, see our farms, and visit South Dakota. We declined all of those meetings. But just within days, we received a phone call from the State Department telling us that those were Chinese spies. They were there to steal our intellectual property, to steal our genetics, and wanted to debrief us if we had met with them. Thank God we did not. We were, not, we were told they were there to help improve our trade relations, that they were there to improve our business and our exports, and instead they were there to steal from the United States of America. So the threat is very real to us every single day, what China is doing, and they have a thousand year plan to become the world dominating power in the world, and the only thing standing in their way is America. Just this past uh, summer, it was very clear to me when those Chinese spies were in our state, that China wants to control us, and they want to do that by controlling our food supply. The Chinese Communist Party is not our friend. They're not our partner, and they're not our ally. They're our enemy. And they're a rapidly expanding national security threat that can't be ignored. So let me be clear. They are buying up our entire food supply chain, and when America can't feed itself and we rely on other members of another country to feed us, it becomes a national security issue. The country that feeds us will control us. And let me remind you why we do a farm bill every year. And I'm well aware that you have um, a priority to get that done, and I'm looking forward to getting a farm bill done, because that is the safety net for our farmers out there. In the past, the farm bill has always been a bipartisan issue, and it should continue to be a bipartisan issue. I had the opportunity to work on two of them, and it is simply a safety net for our farmers. It is important, and America decided years ago that we needed to have a farm bill to ensure that every family in this country had a safe, and had an affordable food supply, that they had the ability to go to a grocery store and to put food on the table for their families, and that if a farmer had a good year, he could pay his bills, but if he had a bad year, he could lose everything. And we didn't want ever to have a drought or a flood or something happen that caused us to lose all of our small family farms and allow us to lose the ability to feed ourselves. Every family in this country recognizes the importance of a farm bill. I know you do too, and I'm looking forward to you getting one completed to make sure that we continue to feed ourselves in this country. The farm bill should be designed to help farmers and not environmental extremists. I hope that you'll continue to focus on making sure that we are working as a conservationist myself. I'm committed to protecting the abundance of our natural resources in my state, but so-called climate smart agriculture dictated by the Biden administration does not help farmers and it does not help us put food on the table or conserve our natural resources. Well, we want wildlife habitat solutions that meets the needs of the people and the states that best serve this country and our ability to feed ourselves and protect ourselves. The Farm Bill manages risk and it is a safety net and I hope that you can get that done. Recent media reports show that the largest Chinese holder of American egg land is shipping food and medical supplies to China to be stockpiled by the Chinese military. We all saw when China purchased land in North Dakota that they claimed was for a corn processing plant that there wasn't going to be enough corn in that area to supply that plant and that it was just miles from a military installation. They were purchasing that land on purpose for national security reasons and that is why I've made it a priority in my state to ensure that that doesn't happen on my watch. In South Dakota, we worked for two years to make sure that we had a bill in place that would make sure we know who's buying our land and that it wasn't going to be from a country that hated us. China would never allow us to go to their country and buy land in their country. They don't even allow their own people to buy their land. There's no reason we should allow them to come into our country and buy our land, and especially not close to our military installations. South Dakota is the home to Ellsworth Air Force Base. It's the home of the B-1 bomber that has protected this country for the last 50 years. It's also home to the MQ-9 Reaper drones, which are in operation protecting us as well. But it will be the first home of the B-21s, which will be the, the bombing platform that will protect this country for the next 50 years. And it's incredibly important that we stop China and that we make sure other evil foreign governments don't come in and have the opportunity to buy up land next to these military installations. When we talk about food policy, Please talk about it from a national security standpoint. It is important that we grow our own food, that we produce it here, and that we're doing it in a way that protects the United States of America. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I will yield back.